Okay, so hello everyone. Uh, we are going to wait just a little bit for more people to join in. So we are just uh, just want to say that we're uh, very happy to to have uh, you here with us this evening. So if you um, have some questions during this this session, uh, you can use the chat box. And uh, also, we you should know that uh, this event is going to be recorded. So for all the people who cannot be here uh, this evening, this is going to be available on YouTube later. So you can just check in the in the Imgut's Council account on YouTube. Okay, so we'll just give uh, more people some more minutes, and then we can start. Okay, I think we can move on. Okay, thank you very much. So I want to say uh, good evening and welcome to this webinar. I'm Valeska Lima and I'm a lecturer in politics in, in WCD University. And together with the Immigrants Council of Ireland, um, we have been organizing this, this webinar series, which is part of a research project funded by the, the Research Council of Ireland. And uh, what is this project about exactly? So this is about getting more migrants, more, more people from migrant background were engaged in politics. Of course, there are many ways to be politically engaged. For example, uh, being involved in, in the community is a way to be, to be politically active. But political engagement is also related to, to, have inter, uh, 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 to be interested in, in, in politics and voting regularly, for example. So in this webinar series, we're going to focus on political participation in the area of electoral participation, because this is uh, particularly one of, the, one of the goals of this project, which is to encourage migrants to run for, for uh, local elections, and why this is important, why this is necessary. Because despite, um, um, even though we have increasing population of migrants in Ireland, Migrant, uh, um, migrant groups, they have been historically underrepresented in politics, and we truly believe that this needs to change. So together, the four webinars in this series, uh, they are going to introduce the different aspects of the Irish political system, uh, with a focus on aspiring local election candidates, and also on those with interest in the Irish political and electoral system. So in this first webinar this evening, we'll be talking about migrants voting and running in Irish local elections. So we have a great lineup of speakers uh, this evening. Uh, we have here with us uh, Yara Laga. Yara, uh, she is a parliamentary researcher in, in the, in the Shannon Iron. Yara is a Palestinian. She is an Irish social justice activist, and she works passionately on, on on improving conditions for vulnerable members in our society. Her recent research includes the participation and engagement of Muslim um, in, of the Muslim community in politics, exploring the attitudes and barriers faced by Muslims in, in politics in Ireland. She, she's also a board member um, for Women for Election, and she, she also works closely with Alman Association, which is a not-for-profit that works with vulnerable women in Ireland, including asylum seekers, migrants, and victims of domestic abuse. We also have here with us Councillor Abu Kalan Azad Teledkar, who is originally from, from Bangladesh, and he's the first Muslim councillor elected in Limerick in the, 2000, in the 2019 local elections, being the only elected councillor of a migrant background out of the 279 Finnefall local councillors nationwide. Um, Consul Abu arrived in Limerick in the 2000s, and, and, and he started to work with Finnofal in 2004 as an AD to form a, a junior minister, Peter Power, within the migrant community. His father was a politician in Dhaka, the capital of Bangladesh, and he's now following those footsteps and making his own contribution as a deputy mayor of Limerick City and County Council. 
And our lineup is completed with Bart Drioffi, uh, who is the chair of the Polish community in Waterford Group, and he's a technical manager, but has participated in various leadership programs organized by the Immigrant Council of Ireland, <clears throat> including the Migrant Electoral Empowerment Training. And he's considering taking a step forward in his political career to, to run as a candidate for the 2004 local election. So um, with that, I will hand over to Teresa. She, she'll be chairing the next uh, section. Thank you. Thank you very much, Valeska, and welcome everyone for the session today. Um, just a reminder to everyone that this session will be recorded for everyone to access at a later stage. So uh, feel free to share it with your network members as well. If you would like to ask any question, please make a use of the chat box or the Q&A box because there will be no opportunities to ask the question directly because of the nature of this webinar, uh, the audio is dis disabled. So um, welcome all the panelists. Uh, each of the panelists has a different experience when it comes to political participation. And that's why we invited them because they can share practical tips uh, and information for anyone who wish to, who is considering running in local elections in 2024 and wish to engage migrant community and migrant voters. So I'm going to start with a question to uh, Yara because Yara, as you've heard, she's a board member of Women for Election and she did research around uh, political participation of the Muslim community. So Yara, why did you took interest in diversity in politics? Why did you uh, start researching on this topic uh, and, and got involved? Yeah, firstly, uh, thank you so much for having me here. And, you know, I hope, hopefully I can contribute positively to this really important um, topic. And I'm very happy to see Abdul Talukter here who actually contributed to my research. Um, I suppose my interest lies, so, you know, at a very basic level, you know, the essence of democracy is equal influence on public policy and decision making. Um, I suppose longer answer and personal answer is, you know, having grown up in a very white dominated uh, neighborhood or community, you know, went to an all girls Catholic school um, was the only, you know, myself and my sister were the only two members of, you know, minority community. I really enjoyed my environment, but I never felt comfortable enough to celebrate or was never empowered um, to celebrate my diversity. Um, and I always thought life would be easier. And it was if I concealed, you know, my background and my religion. Um, and I was, you know, I was different, although the same in so many ways. But I also tried, I always tried assimilating and never brought up my background, you know, religion or beliefs, because I felt I didn't fit the mold that way. Uh, and if I did, I was convinced I would be met with hostility. And um, that reality could have been very different if I was more confident in having a different background. And maybe it was all in my head in terms of how people would react and receive me if I spoke more about, you know, my religion, Islam, or if I spoke about my Palestinian heritage and culture. But there was never a safe space to feel like I could. And um, there was never an active effort to be more inclusive to celebrate the different you know religious holidays for examples to inform students of different cultures and religions all of which allows people to feel part of a community and, and, and societal fabric and um, gives them confidence to include themselves in decisions and conversations and um, having said that I of course recognize my privilege um, as well, I suppose, in being fair skinned and having only worn the hijab, the headscarf relatively recently, as opposed to many of the schoolgirls who, who who do wear the hijab and, and, and face overt and covert racist incidents and microaggressions. Fast forward, I suppose, to my college experience and now my professional environment. And um, like you mentioned, I work in the Shannon. Um, and I've been lucky to work with parliamentarians and colleagues who understand the importance of diversity how it enriches society and crucially the effects of marginalization the dangers of marginalization how it fosters fosters fertile ground for ignorance racism violence and um, the otherization of people that breeds hostility speculation distrust and um, which is reflected in my research and how it simply destroys society and, and social harmony um, and then on a policy level, I can very definitively tell you that bad policy is made when the right people aren't at the table. Um, and it's no longer, so I was listening to Senator Alice Mary Higgins today speak on Itash Women's Day. It's no longer, you know, asking for people to, uh, giving people the space, it's giving them power. It's um, allowing them to frame the agenda. Um, and it's, it's all about power at the end of the day. 
Um, and also, like you mentioned, uh, very recently as part of my master's program, I conducted research around this very topic. Um, so the Muslim community's attitudes towards political participation. Um, so maybe I'll touch on some of my findings as we go on with the webinar then. Great, right, thank you. Yeah, I think a lot of people share similar reasons why we're getting politically active because this is our life and, and we need to uh, be included. It's not about giving space, but it's about giving power. Um, Councillor uh, Telegdar, I'm going to go to you. Already we've heard from your bio that you arrived here in the year 2000. So uh, congratulations on uh, 22nd anniversary of your arrival. Um, we, we've heard also that your father was a politician and that you started working with Finafori quite early. But apart from um, having a family history of political participation, can you tell us a little bit more what were the other reasons that you that motivated you to get politically active in Ireland? Sure. Uh, uh, first of all, um, uh, uh, thank you to invite me, give me opportunity to talk today and uh, hold my uh, panel. Everybody uh, welcome and Basically, today I'm I'm not very well to talk. You know, physically my body, my brain is not working. But uh, I, I'll I'll do a very brief talk today. And uh, all I'm going to say, reason I came to the politics is uh, is you know when 20 years ago, uh, 22 years ago, when I came to Limerick, and you know we faced some uh, reality problem in the ground, especially for the migrant background people. And, and we, uh, that time we just came first to Ireland. We don't know where to go, who to go. And, uh, but problem is coming, you know, from, you know, when you come to the new country, there's the language barrier, there's the culture barrier, all those things. And, you know, problem was, uh, if you ask me same problem today, it looks very small to me, but uh, 22 years ago, those kind of problem was very big to us. Then, you know, that's why we, we don't know how to face that. Then we go to the local politician. And, and I, I believe the political platform is the, one of the biggest platform, uh, biggest strong platform to, you know, solve the problem. And sometimes individually we can, we can try a lot of things, but, we, it, you know, we are not strong enough individually. And political, uh, you know, platform always good to, have with you. And that's the reason I, you know, I came to politics in Limerick and in Ireland. And basically, you know, it's not about uh, making ourselves hero or anything like that. All we just try to do, just adding something, you know, uh, it is for not for ourselves, it's for our children, it's for the, our future. Because you know, our, uh, like uh, I have two daughters, they're born here, they go to college here. And uh, many, uh, many of our, uh, uh, my friends, their children is born here. You know, like when your children is born here and uh, as a parents, everybody, uh, you know, same like everybody else, uh, your children is the, your future. And if you think your future, that means your Limerick and Ireland's your future. And why not we build together our future? You know, that's the reason I, 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 you know, I just came into politics to build uh, our future together. That's it. You know, we, we are not came to the politics, uh, especially myself. I'm not came to the politics, you know, like uh, to become hero or anything. And I'm never be, you know, a social media person or anything like that. I do work as a ground level and, you know, uh, and uh, whoever need help, whatever I can do, I do my best. And that's the way I, I start uh you know start my journey great thank you so much and and Bart, so now i'm going to uh, have a similar question to you can you tell us um how long you've been living in ireland and at what point you started uh, getting interested in political participation um and what were what kind of what would be your motivation if you get involved as a as a, as a candidate in the next local elections uh, good evening. Uh, thank you for having me. Um, to answer your questions, Teresa, um, I've, uh, <laughs> I've arrived to Ireland in 2006, and um, it took me probably about five years to decide whether this is the place that I want to stay or, or, or do I move somewhere further. And from 
year three, I believe, uh, I find out that this is the place that I want to stay. And uh, then it was a matter of deciding um, is what for the place for us or not. And um, as, as time shows, I'm a oh, we are uh, over 16 years, well, almost 16 years in, in Ireland, uh, 14 years in Waterford. So I believe this is the place that, that we are going to stay, um, especially with the fact that the two kids are born and raised in here. They attend um, local schools. So um, um, that's, that, that, that's here to stay. Um, what, when I got, when, when I got um, 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 drawn into, into politics, I, I don't think I've got drawn into politics yet. I'm, I'm still on the fence trying to decide, but I think it was, um, um, it was 2013 that after deciding that, yes, this is, this is my place to stay, I just want to, to have a voice in, 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 um, in, in saying what I would like the, the, the city to be, or that I would love to have the better um, um, cycling facilities, for example. And, um, and um, then um, I suppose we went over to that um, um, uh, 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 workshop that you've organized uh, for, the, for the people interested in maybe joining the politics. And, and I'd say it was actually Councillor Telecta um, 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 as a guest who actually just um, told us his story that I sort of find, found myself in, in, in how it became or, or, or how it started with, with, with himself. And, 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 and I might be actually just looking into, into following his steps because I'm, I'm not really much of a, of a social presence, photographs and so on. I'm more about actually just um, improving the community. And I suppose that's why, the, or that's how I become the chairman of the Polish um, um, Association in Waterford, uh, of, um, yeah, Polish Association in Waterford. And that's how I got involved with the uh, resident association in the um, estate that we moved in three years ago. So, so just, just, just helping to shape the future and, and, and to be at the table when, when it's being decided for us. Um, there is 32 seats in the World War Council, and not a single seat is being filled by a person from the migrant uh, background. And um, migrants in Ireland, um, they come up to, I think, 12%. So out of 949 seats uh, nationwide, we might be expecting, um, if, if it was the, 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 the proportional participation, about 100 seats being filled by migrants, but it isn't. Mm -hmm. uh, out of 32 seats, there, there's not a single migrant um, councillor over here. So even having meetings with uh, Filipino community in Waterford, with Croatian community in Waterford, um, we do not have a person from the migrant uh, background that might be more receiving when it comes to actually just addressing the concerns that we might have. Yeah. So maybe that's the way to actually just be at the table and, mm -hmm. and, and work on having some of the issues addressed. Yeah, so I, I already can sense that we are all talking about the same. We all recognize the value of diversity, but also yes. the value of unity and working collectively towards common goal and uh, building our common future. And I, want, and I really love to see how already um, current councillors of the migrant background are role models to anyone who is thinking about getting uh, um, uh, into politics. So, Councillor Talek Dur, you are a role model to Bart. Bart wants yeah. to follow your steps. And it's so wonderful to have you together uh, discussing those issues. So Bart, you haven't decided yet if you're going to run in two years time, what would be your concerns? What, what stops you from making that final decisions? Well, th th there's, many concern, th th there's many considerations to have. And, uh... Uh, just to, uh, I, I suppose, to put it plainly, is, is the lack of family links. If, if I had an extended family over here, I would know that 
there will always be someone to look after my kids, to collect them from school, to drive them to school. Um, I would I would know that if there is a, a show that my son is attending, there will be someone at least to actually record it. And if I cannot, and um, just being a family um, of four, uh, both um, are working professionally. Uh, it's not well. It, it's it, it's sort of a hassle to actually just um, 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 have a family life, uh, have a work life, uh, um, have time, quality time to spend with your uh, with your children, and um, adding adding a adding all the duties uh, uh, that come with, uh, uh, with with the with the with the career with the with the job as a counselor. Uh, it is an extra on top. So that would definitely mean that I need to relook at, at at what am I doing. I, I might be actually forced to, to resign from being a chair of the Polish community in Waterford. So so there is uh, it's it's lack of the family links and probably lack mm -hmm. of time. There's only 24 hours uh, a day, and uh, we've been told that uh, being a counselor is a part-time job. Uh, I've been I've been actually just um, looking how does that uh, look like, and um, I, I I definitely can say it's not a part time job. Uh, it's more like a full time job with your phone being constantly on, and you are the one to be eager to accept all the phones and address the concerns and um, and and um, um, solve them. Yeah, thank you. Um, Councillor, I think you might have something to add that, to that as well. Probably you had your own concerns uh, when you were making decisions whether to become uh, a candidate. So you might also add to that if, you, if there is any additional concerns that you think uh, are specific to being a migrant. But I wanted to ask you because you are a member of a political party. And we know that membership in a political party gives a significant advantage when it comes to a successful election campaign. How did you make that decision? Which party uh, fits your um, values? Because we get that information question quite a lot from migrants who are saying like, which political party should I join? Um, and by the way, to everyone who's listening today, our third session will be exactly answering this question. But maybe quickly you can uh, if you can tell us how did you make decision? Which political party suits you suits your, suits your values and goals? Yeah, sure. Uh, how is uh... You know, this honest opinion, when I joined the Finnafal, I don't know much different ideological wise other party and Finnafal, okay? I, I didn't join by the ideological wise. I, the reason I joined to Finnafal is the local leader and local community who, who is, stand, because when we first came to Limerick that time was, you know, 15, 20 years ago and uh, very little, uh, you know, migrant community involved with the Irish uh, politician. And that time I, I, I find that they are very helpful. I've been to a lot of different political party leaders and and some reason I, I find somebody, he was very friendly, he was very helpful and he stand for the, you know, with the migrant community. That's the reason I first take my step to toward to the Fianna Fáil. Mm -hmm. And I saw there, uh, you know, there, I, I mix a lot of a uh, lot of other leader. I saw they're truly diverse, and you know they are very progressive and fair to everybody, and positive integration. Uh, you know, and I, I can tell you another thing: the, this month, twenty second of this month, and uh, John uh, Lee Hurd, he's the TD, and he's a uh, equality and integration of, uh, officer for the he spoke person for the uh, Fianna Fáil. Uh, she, uh, and she, uh, Eric McGreen, I think he is the senator. Uh, he is the same, uh, you know, equality and integration. And they are they are going to uh, uh, migrant network. Uh, they're going to announce the migrant uh, network. And especially the reason they uh, they are thinking to do that because they can see that many migrant people came to Ireland and they are they are living here and they need some kind of platform. And that's why Fina Fall, they're trying to, you know, making the platform, making welcome to the migrant people. 
And uh, reason uh, I cannot compare with other party. I don't want to, uh, you know, comments with other party. I believe everybody uh, tried to do the same. Mm -hmm. Everybody is good. But I feel fair of all, they did very good with the migrant people. Because even last election, uh, you know, they give more than uh, eight or nine people, they give the nomination mm -hmm. to run from their party. Uh, unfortunately, you know, just only one candidate got to win from that. And and other we we have uh, but fina fall what they did they co opt two other candidates mm -hmm. from the migrant uh, background that's right and yes that's right yes they yeah. they they co opt two other candidates from the migrant background that means party party behind the migrant community you know mm -hmm. like i know maybe one person who elected you know uh, uh, this okay for the directly people's vote if you t uh, think the purpose uh, uh, the party even party behind the migrant because mm -hmm. you can see they uh, they co-op uh, other migrant uh, people yeah. to the uh, council, and that's so why very much not... so very much that was a personal sort of uh, reason why you joined the political party, yes. and that's and, also something that people I, I should can be tell considering. You, uh, previous speaker uh, who is a little bit confused to running or not, okay, I just uh, uh, I just tell you a little thing. First thing before you run, uh, it's not only politics, anything. Uh, especially in the politics, you have to be with the people's person. You know, you have to be available for people's. And uh, I, I was uh, spoken to him before also. I saw, and he's very uh, uh, well present, well, uh, well speaker. And I think he can do a lot better. He need bit confidence. Okay, when I start, I start from you know from nothing, from zero. And uh, all you need your own confidence, and I believe uh, you can do it. There you go. That's uh, that's an encouragement, especially when uh, you're getting that encouragement back from your role model. And now you have to run. Um, Yara, I'm going to ask you because we're already talking about political parties. Um, how would you uh, really assess the efforts of political parties to date in terms of? Um, um, inviting migrants to be members uh, or um, if they interest in migrant votes. Uh, can you talk us uh, through on that a little bit? Um, I think I'm a bit more cynical than Councillor Talakdar would be in relation to this. Um, again, I can only speak to what's public and what's published and what I see, you know, you know, you know their efforts that they that they that they show um, and what we're exposed to um, and I suppose when I was conducting my 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 research it was just after the general elections um, so I spent a lot of time kind of observing party um the different political parties literature party manifestos their election campaigns um in the context of diversity and minority rights um, and so this is essentially the first and main exposure potential candidates and voters have to the parties um, and what I found was that there was an absence of real distinguished um, targeted efforts proposed by the parties to encourage diversity and inclusion um, in, in, in policy and never mind their actual po political structure. Um, so, you know, so you had kind of in, in most party manifestos, you had kind of vague novelistic mention of you know, hate crime legislation or asylum seeker rights, um, but nothing robust or nothing, no real meaningful commitments. Um, so that signaled to me, I suppose, as a private citizen, as a voter, that if their policies doesn't extend as far as considering prioritizing and protecting minor minorities, that the assumption then would be that recruiting migrant candidates um, or voters is not a priority either. Mm -hmm. um, and it would be difficult in that sense to succeed um in 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 the conventional kind of electoral process um yeah. councillor has a different yeah, opinion. so so i mean this is a very very fair point so there might be personal very positive experiences of individual party members as with councillor here but uh for people who don't know anything about political parties and they just want to learn something the information is rather not attractive um that's very point, uh, very fair point. But uh, following on that, uh, from your research, what is the attitude to migrants towards political parties and to voting? Like, are they interested? Are they not interested? Uh, why? 
Um, yeah, I suppose to give a little context um, in terms of my research and, and the findings, um, which obviously micro focused on, on Muslims, but is applicable to migrants more broadly. Um, I found that, first of all, Ireland is really um, quite unique in its political landscape in the sense that we don't, uh, when it comes to the political spectrum and where political parties lie. So we have, with the absence of, you know, successful far right political parties um, and like very um, overtly anti-immigrant or anti-Muslim platforms in Ireland, um, Muslims and, and migrants are not highly politicized, um, nor is it, in, you know, is it central or prioritized in, in political discourse as it would be in comparable countries, you know, neighboring countries, if we look at the UK or if we look at right-wing governments in Austria or Hungary, where Muslims and immigrants are highly politicized and, and central in national political discourse and weaponized actually sometimes for votes in political capital. So my research was based on the premise that if political systems are favorable to Muslims or migrants, then we should expect to see positive attitudes by, by Muslim migrants towards the political system and have an, a positive engagement and participation in political institutions. And so, you know, long story short, um, when I was concluding my research and, you know, analyzing the data and actually using a quote by one of my interviewees, my research was titled, you shouldn't touch politics and electricity because both will kill you. <laughs> so I'm sure that kind of answers your question or sums it up. Um, and I suppose to kind of directly answer your question, um, as part of my research, I distributed, you know, uh, surveys um, uh, within the Muslim community and I had 125 respondents. Um, and some kind of find some really stark findings, I suppose, show that 68% of the respondents said they did they didn't vote in the last general elections. Um, 52% of respondents claimed they don't know who their local TDs or councillors are. Um, and based on you know similar questions following the same theme and pattern, you could easily conclude that there was a very poor level of participation in conventional uh, conventional forms of politics, mm -hmm. so voting. Mm -hmm. um, but also what I found really interesting was that when I spoke to my interviewees, um, including Count Telector, um, you know, they, they, they spoke about political activism. And you mentioned this um, earlier um, as in not being solely um, characterized by activities within mainstream conventional political structures, but also take place outside the walls, walls of political institutions. So, you know, Muslims, um, activities um, so socio-political political activities was deeply rooted in grassroots initiatives diy forms of political activism and civil society organizations so you may not have muslims in the doll or the shanid for example but every friday night you have the muslim sisters of air for example outside the gpo hosting soup runs to feed our homeless or you have a man association at direct provision centers twice a year providing essential food and clothing packs to meet as asylum seekers basic needs and so you have civil society organizations carrying out the functions of the state and politicians but they're not awarded the same political or social capital mm -hmm. um, and then you know my studies showed um which you know most studies will show as well the absence of you know top-down opportunities for members of ethnic minority groups um, and and how this leads to bottom-up mobilization of minor minorities and so there's this over reliance <laughs> of these grassroots organizations to fulfill the functions of the state and put mm -hmm. in most cases without state support or representation. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then yeah. of course, like Muslim engaging, Muslims engaging, and um, I'm sure Councillor could speak um, more about this, but engaging in mainstream political outlets, such as campaigning for elections is met with discrimination and hostility, um, as was evident with all three um, interviews that I conducted, as well as, you know, and as well as the structural barriers, I suppose, the low number of representatives could be, could also derive from an attitudinal issue. So mm -hmm. attitudes they have towards politics. So a lot of people carry baggage from their home countries around politics and politics being a dirty game um, and also the fear of rejection from the wider public, lack of trust in our state institutions and the belief that, you know, political institutions don't accurately represent uh, public mm -hmm. interest, which I think is common within society in general as well. Mm -hmm.
Yeah. So there was there was a, a rich answer there, uh, but just to summarize that is people don't see themselves represented, so that's why they are not necessarily interested in politics. There is discrimination, people are active outside of the electoral system, and the question is how to bring them into the electoral system, because in the end of the day, that's where the decisions are being made, so we want people to be electorally active. Um, and obviously, um, many, many other issues. And Councillor, I might come back to you uh, to, to ask you about your particular experience during election campaign. How uh, was your experience with migrant voters? But Bart, I'm going to ask you a similar question because obviously Yara is speaking about particular co co cohort uh, Muslim communities. Uh, you know, you are Polish, um, you have connections with Eastern Europeans, other communities. Do you see similar patterns? How is it uh, the interest uh, in politics uh, in other communities from your perspective? Um, well, I would I would agree with what Yara said that um, um, just because there is no representation, uh, uh, we might be actually just coming to the fact that uh, um, people are not interested in politics because whoever is over there in the council uh, uh, at the local level, uh, these are. Uh, Non, not the one of ours. They are not migrants, uh, um, migrants or having a migrant background. So, so there might be, uh, um, might be a slight lack of trust in terms of 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 of, of coming over to to a, a, and asking to to have their needs addressed. Um, to answer your questions as as how does it look in the Polish community? I, I believe. Um, if we if we look at the last um, two or, or three even elections, um, um, uh, local elections, 2009, uh, 2014, and 2019, um, you can actually just see that there were there was a number of candidates uh, from the Polish background back in 2009, and uh, uh, none of them have actually gathered enough uh, uh, votes to to to, to go uh, uh, to, to to pass the first counting. Um, uh, uh, same it was for 2014 and 2019. So um, the way it looks to me right now is that we might be only coming to the stage that uh, uh, the migrant um, 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 candidates, they might be actually just getting uh, um, themselves established within the community. And maybe it is the time to actually just take part in those um, um, elections and, and, and see what it brings us. It's a little bit touch 22, right? Because we yes. need more uh, candidates uh, to be elected, but we need uh, already elected role models to encourage candidates. Yes. So, yes. Bart, we need people like you and Yara, we need people like you to run for the elections. Um, <laughs> Councillor, a question to you. What was your experience with migrants when you were engaging with them uh, during your election campaign? How did they react to you when you knocked at their door? Uh, were they interested? Uh, were they happy to see you there? Uh, okay, uh, first of all, you know, it's nothing is easy when you start first, yeah? And what happened uh, when you are migrant, you are different color, and top of that, you are Muslim. You know, all top of that, like a small room, some elephant came into the room. It's something like all of those, then top of that, you are Muslim. It's not easy because how, you know, whole world politicalized, you know, religious division and all this. Even, you know, personally, we have nothing to do with this thing. That's your own belief, what you believe, this thing. And yes, I, I face there's some problem. And some people, you know, I face the, a lot of bad comments and, but that's the, you know, good thing. There's a lot of good people around there too. And because the team I made, uh, you know, the campaign team, there's the mixed culture campaign team. My manager, uh, you know, uh, campaign manager was she, uh, Celine Ryan. She was the uh, lecturer on, uh, in UL and a few other people, you know, good people around with me that time. And, you know, but whatever I face, I, I, Sometimes I ignore those because why I ignore those something, I know I can answer back because I know I, I was right, but sometimes you have to wait for the right time. I know I don't want to waste my positive energy 
to wasting this kind of you know racism and all this to you know fighting and wasting my time because i try to you know uh, i know it, it's nobody uh, you know even my family uh, got racist comment because uh, uh, my family they wore the hijab you know and uh, in school even my my wife everybody faced this kind of problem when i first start running election but i know i know uh, you know same thing i'm telling again i know there's a lot of good people and sometimes we have to ignore sometimes we uh, you know the but everything have limitation sometimes i answer back when when i saw they are crossing their line you know crossing my line and you have to be strong yourself and first thing you have to be believe yourself what you're doing and i was strongly believe why i'm doing and what i'm doing and i was all i tried to do you know the all the migrant community get together and integration in the society make bigger impact for the future that was my target i'm still doing same work and that's why you know all the negative thing i i don't want to uh, take I don't want to take too much negative. Even uh, even uh, today or yesterday, a Limbic post was uh, you know published today's uh, today's meeting, and they have few you know few you know unacceptable uh, comments. I, I just read that and I forget that because I know this those kind of people what they try to do they try to get the attention because they are not popular. They have no support and reason i i don't want to waste my time because i know i have majority support than those people that's why i'm not you know i'm not following them i don't want to waste my energy my brain to them that's why you know you will face whoever running a uh, future you will face this kind of negative thing but you have to be strong yourself and you have to believe what you're doing if you know your goal you will reach that and uh, you cannot ignore uh, racism. You cannot, you know, like, unfortunately, we have to live with that. Sometimes, you know, you have to see the right time, right answer you have to give. Thank you for this honest account of your experience. Um, and if, um, if you were also to share other maybe tips, how did you prepare for your campaign? Uh, what... Um, any person who is uh, thinking about running for elections, what should they pay attention to? Okay. Uh, first of all, uh, what we have to do, we have to engage with the local community, definitely sure. And it's not like, uh, you know, like we're just coming somewhere and I say, okay, give me vote, give me vote. You know, nobody will give you a vote. You have to be the people's person. You have to engage with the local community and <clears throat> Uh, this can be, you know, resident association, can be local sports club, uh, can be, uh, you know, anything. You know, any local activities, this can be drama, it can be sports, you know, anything. You have to involve the local activities. And obviously you have to, you know, the Morgan community, they have, uh, you know, different uh, different sports let's say i was very in, uh, strongly involved with the cricket because i know the you know the my a uh, lot of migrant community they they love their cricket and try i try to support them for the cricket then i was uh, involved in the sports organization you know the uh, uh, migrant sports organization they organized the uh, you know soccer tournament they organized the badminton tournament and i was involved in all those things uh, you know the uh, and some charity organization because you know, I just tell you anything in 2014, I got offered to run the election and I, I refused myself because I told them I'm not ready myself. Because that's the thing, what I did, I, I, I make myself ready and I did work in the ground. And I, you know, like basically you have to, uh, you know, bottom line is you have to be with people first. Mm -hmm. You have to show them your ability like we organize sports organization and I, I did work for that, you know, in the background that people say, no, this guy can do something. He, you know, he spent his time, he spent his brain 
uh, he organized this thing is good tournament or something you know like we have to show something little little thing and and another thing you know that it's not like separate margent and uh, and local irish you have to integrate the program you know you have to integrate uh, you know you do anything you uh, you don't feel okay we are just migrant people who are doing this why not you invite some your local friends your local resident you your work colleague you know it can be always try to be mixed with them integrate with them and that's the way i i start my you know journey beginning and okay. that's why anybody do any uh, you know the running election they have to with the you know some background first okay so yeah. that's very important uh, so you're saying long term project uh, and don't rush it, it. don't rush yeah. into it okay um, Yara, uh, maybe quickly, if you can uh, offer a couple of uh, ideas, how do you think we can energize migrant voters to move them from grassroots into electoral uh, um, participation? Uh, any ideas? What do you think might work? Um, I think, so I think I would, again, because I'm very passionate about top-down structures and top-down opportunities. I think the way we see it now, it's very difficult for anyone to successfully succeed through the electoral process. So we need um, structures, top-down structures in place that will incentivize actually minorities to, to, to engage in, in politics. Um, so I suppose I'm more so coming from um, political parties and you know what structures are necessary to be put in place for for, for to make that path um, a, a little bit easier um so like for example like some of the things um to, uh, council protector kind of pointed out the importance of you know community relationships as well and you know how to mobilize voters i found very interestingly that when it comes to the muslim community um there's a strong positive link between mosques and Muslim institutions and and stimulating uh, political knowledge within Muslim audiences or encouraging Muslim audiences to actually vote. Um, and that makes sense, right? So you have members of an organization and especially immigrant communities and minorities. Um, Bart mentions the, the, the Polish and um, Irish Council, you know, drive, you know, these people, you know, members of these organizations go there and drive a sense of self from, from that group that they identify with. So forming positive relations with with these um, religious, cultural, um, minority organizational links and institutions could could encourage um, voters. Um, um, and what so I also think it's important, like I said, to incentivize um, immigrants and people from minority communities to get involved. Um, and I think that requires political leadership. Um, it requires strong commitments. It requires um, integration protocols for political parties. Um, one model could be, you know, um, extend the existing anti-racism protocol to include commitments um, by political parties to promote the recruitment of immigrant and ethnic minority members to introduce also the necessary data collection and monitoring systems mm -hmm. um, and to develop mentoring schemes. I think, Teresa, you mentioned the importance of, you know, having that role model um, aimed to develop candidates from immigrant and ethnic minority um, communities because commitment on its own is, is not enough mm -hmm. um, and then something that um you know council director actually had mentioned during my research was important of you know inc inclusionary structures in place um like reserved a uh, seat quota system um that would counter kind of imbalances and inequalities um because I think the, the drive is there. And like I mentioned, you know, immigrants and Muslims more specifically as well are engaged in civ civil society and civic activism and are engaged in political activism, but it's how we empower them um, and just transfer those skills within, you know, political structures. Mm. Um, and I think that requires um, opportunities and structures um, to make that transition um, because in my opinion, you know, some of these people would make better politicians than, you know, most most of the people we see. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I just want to remind everyone, if you have any questions, please use uh, the chat box or the Q&A box. Uh, we have uh, only a couple of minutes left. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask them. Um, so, uh, you know, in, in a way, uh, migrants have that advantage that they know those uh, community groups and they can engage with them. So that should be also part of the strategy of an, any election candidate 
to engage with local community, especially migrant communities, uh, because other candidates might not necessarily think about going there. But at the same time, as Councillor said, um, also don't forget about Irish people, right? So uh, also connect with them. Um, but I'm going to ask you a question um, in terms of your uh, sort of plans as well. Uh, I'm not sure if you are a member of a political party, but you don't have to say um, which one, if you're considering joining or if you, you know, if you will be making decision about running for uh, elections, will you be running as an independent candidate? What, what would be your plans? Sorry, is that directed at myself or? No, that's Bart. Oh, sorry, <laughs> I was confused. <laughs> I, I believe that the emails are now flying onto my mailbox uh, from all the parties asking me to join and, and become the um, um, candidate. Uh, no, for a moment, I, I do not have a, a specified party. I'm not a member of, I, I'm not a party member. Um, I do uh, work over here with, um, 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 I think, three or four councillors over here in Waterford, and each of them happen to be from the different party. So um, um, I do actually just take from, from where Councillor Telector took it that um, if, we, if we go by a person, by the councillor who I'm, I'm working with, I'm happy to join every single party that there are with. Uh, but there are some, some differences between the parties and, and I actually haven't made up my mind uh, yet as to which party I would like to um, 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 identify. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, so I can't see any questions. Um, so I think um, either we are explaining everything so excellent or um, you know, people are still very much confused because I think there is a lot of confusion when it comes to especially political parties. So let's continue with, with, with the rest of the questions. Um, maybe just a, a closing question, maybe uh, each one of you might answer to, to the question. Uh, Councillor, I'm gonna start with you. What would be your one key advice to any person considering running for elections? Um, can you ask me again? I couldn't hear properly. What would be your advice to any person considering running for elections? Okay, considering running for election, I, I already told that part of this uh, question I already answered previously. But uh, if, if anybody wants to run the election, first of all they need to engage with community. This can be there if you go smaller, okay, if you are origin from Asia, you have Asian community. If you go, you know, the migrant, you have to go with whole migrant community. Then you are a uh, new Irish, you go with whole Irish community. You know, like you come from the uh, your home, then slowly, slowly you, you have to brought yourself. Because I give you one example. I I I I got uh, uh, one place called Patrick's Well. You know, that's very, uh, in my Limerick City West, very, the last border is kind of county site. And I was trying to campaign their site and a lot of people who, who was uh, my party colleague and other people, don't, they told me, uh, don't waste your time to campaign that area because they are, you know, their county side, they won't give you the vote and all this. But I put my leaflet, okay? And when is the board, uh, board was counting, I saw I got good few votes from there. And people, uh, you know, people uh, told me, don't waste your time, don't go there. Nobody, you know, they just vote there locally, only local candidate from their village. And, but you see, anything can happen. That's why you have to, you have to approach yourself. If you're a candidate, you have to try yourself and always have to open mind, always you have to, you know, like a positive way of thinking because you are, if you're running, you are already in the field. Until last day of the election, don't slow yourself. Just keep go, keep go. doesn't matter what result coming, but you do your part. And okay. that's why whoever running, you, you have to make plan, you know, the uh, plan for the, your campaign and you have to stick. You know, sometimes people are halfway campaign, they say, oh no, it doesn't look like I'm going to win. That's nothing win or lose until you finish the election. Keep holding. And because a lot of people told me, you know, you're wasting your time to running. 
election. Nobody will vote for you. It is in Limerick, you know, like this kind of thing people told me. It, it, it can be in Dublin, but not in Limerick. And by, uh, but I always believe on myself that uh, any candidate, don't give up until last. Okay. And, and even if you fail in the election, you learn a lot of things. And you know, a lot of things I try to do after I elected. A lot of projects, a lot of things I try to do, I'm failing. It's not only I'm failing, I'm failing the same time I'm learning in from that failing also. You know, a lot of things I thought, okay, I become a counselor. When I first elected, I thought, oh, I can do this, I can do that. And I try a lot of different things, but I fail a lot of things. But if I fail one, equal way I learn one also. That's why, you know, like, don't give up. If you run, just run. Okay, that's, that's really uh, amazing. Um, I think uh, concluding uh, comments. But before I go to Yara and Bart, we have one question, and I'm going to direct that to Councillor Talagdor again because it's about how to raise the importance of migrant issues inside the political party. It's for me. Tak. Yes. Yeah. Okay. How uh, how to uh... And uh, inside your political party, yeah, yeah, how to raise, uh, yes, exactly, how to raise yes. migrant issues inside the political yeah. party. You know, the migrant voice, uh, what is my experience? Okay, I was, uh, uh, as uh, many of us doing, you know, the for the undocumented uh, people to make the documents last two, three years, and I was first go to the, uh, you know, like through my party, and uh, I've been to some. TD and uh, I asked for to help me. I said, this is the migrant voice and this is the migrant need because uh, more than, uh, you know, more than 26,000 migrant uh, uh, undocumented people in Ireland and we need help. And uh, you'll be happy. I know a lot of organization, including you and everybody worked for that. It's not any individually, uh, uh, you know, credit holder or anybody. Is, is, it was team from the different different angle. Uh, that, that's why it came out today. But in the first time, I, I remember this three years ago, uh, count, uh, uh, he, uh, Niall Collins, he was first time in the parliament, he, he raised this voice, asked for the undocumented people to make, uh, you know, legalize. And that's the, you know, the, in my party, and they, they stand for that. And that's the one example. And a few, a few other things I, I do, uh, I'd want to say exactly what issue, but uh, you know that for the migrant right, equal right, and this thing we are discussing. And I already told you that this month, twenty uh, second of this month, they're going to announce the migrant network from Finafol. And unfortunately, I cannot be there. I'll be uh, my official trip. I'll be in America that time. I'll coming. Uh, next day after the, uh, you know, uh, 20, uh, I'll be 23rd, I'll be back, but I'll miss that. And that's the thing, you know, the party, you know, party are doing from my party, I can say. And another thing, that's my opportunity. I can tell, I can uh, tell anybody if they want to engage with Pinafal, you know, that uh, if they need any link or anything, and I can help that. I, I don't want to ask anybody to come or anything, but if anybody want, I can give the from the uh, from my uh, because uh, from uh, from party what I see from uh, from prime minister to a local level, you know they uh, they you know even European Parliament member and uh, sen a senator they all they they're treating us very well. You know, they're treating us, you know, very friendly. That's why I believe that's the migrant people, if there's the more migrant people coming, that will be more help for us to make the stronger voice. Mm -hmm. Because we, we have only, you know, three councillors now from Pinafol. And obviously we are, we are trying our best. And if it's more people coming, our voice will be more stronger in the party and we can, uh, you know, we can raise our voice, we can uh, take our goal to whatever we want from our party. That's why we need more uh, people, 
more knowledge and uh, you know that we need more knowledge with us yeah. that's why i'm welcoming if anybody want to join this thank please you send us, please send us information and we will share it with our network uh, but um so you're still thinking about that decision whether you're going to run or not but you've made already some preparations you were uh, researching uh, this topic for yourself what would you say was the most useful uh, information that you received so far that was helpful in this process or uh, activity that you've done that was most helpful in this process? I'd say the most eye-opening uh, was the advice from the councillors and from, from the people elected to actually have as big of a group of people that are going to go out with you canvassing. Because um, that's, that's something that I found out actually collecting signatures under um, objection as the, as the resident association that it's that it that it's really easy to underestimate how much time does it actually take to walk from one house to another house to have a chat here to have a chat there and and suddenly two hours passed and you probably only just visited i don't know um 15 houses so as as big of a team of the people who is actually eager to to, to work with you and and do the canvassing Canvassing is something that uh, that was strange to me as a Polish person because it's not how how it works in Poland. So canvassing is is actually something I'm I'm, I'm really I'm, I'm specific to 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 Ireland to 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 England, and um, just having just just putting your face over there, just showing up at the door and and asking for number one. I'd say that was the most um, I'm I'm opening the, the eye opener. Uh, to actually just show up and listen to the people and just ask for support, I believe. So similar, root yourself in community and build um, a team. So yes. similar to oh, yeah. Councillor Salagdor. Yeah. And Yara, last question for you. Um, what would be your, uh, in, what would you say to migrants? How would you encourage them to be uh, uh, active voters? Uh, what would you say them, to them? Um, I think I don't under, underestimate people's decisions or I know people don't, you know, um, politics isn't an easy thing for immigrants or for people from minority backgrounds. But I think I would say, you know, take the step to involve yourself in politics. It might be difficult. It might be the easiest step you take. Um, but when, when, when you do take that extra step, you're taking that extra step on behalf of thousands of people for whom you know the odds are stacked against um, and like the councillor said you do your part even if it's just the, representing the interests of a tiny tiny cohort of society it's still having an impact on people's lives um, and you'll find like for people who are thinking of um, running in elections or you know whatever it may be that you know although access is difficult um, and maybe not be as you know as easy as you know you know, as you know, it might be difficult, but once you're in, you have a lot more agency than you think. Um, and I think the counselor is an example of that. So definitely. Thank you that. so much. Thank you so much all for joining us. So that's the end of our first session about uh, what it takes to run an election campaign and how to mobilize migrant voters. Uh, our next uh, session will be in two weeks time um, about migrant women, uh, especially. So please make sure to register for that session because you need to register separately for each session. And thank you very much for your attendance and enjoy your evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good evening. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you all. Bye. Bye. And if anybody need any help, don't hesitate to contact me. Any next candidate anywhere in our <laughs> contact me. I'll try to help as much as I can. There you go. Yeah. Thank you very much, uh, Liliana. We might uh, close the session and- Doesn't matter uh, which party, doesn't matter any migrant candidate will help. Great. Thank you. Um,